show me one other site which is 12,000 years old, which is built out of megaliths. You know, show me a site. There was no culture in the world 12,000 years ago that was capable of that level of organization. If there was, we would find other sites. Welcome to the mysteries of Sigiriya, the ancient sky fortress perched high above the jungles of Sri Lanka. Imagine a towering rock rising 660 feet into the sky, topped with a palace that seems to touch the clouds. But the questions that boggle the mind are, why and how did ancient humans build such an awe-inspiring structure, complete with a vast body of water high above the ground? In today's video, we'll climb the steps of Sigiriya, uncover its hidden secrets, and explore the incredible engineering feats of the past. Stay tuned as we unravel how this fortress was not just a marvel of beauty, but a masterpiece of ancient technology. Did you know that the stunning Sigiriya, or Lion Rock, has a story that reaches deep into the history of Sri Lankan royalty? This tale begins in the 5th century AD, chronicled vividly in the ancient Kulavamsa. This epic documents the saga of King Kasyapa, who ruled from 477 to 495 CE. In a dramatic twist of events, Kasyapa seized the throne from his half-brother Mogalana, setting the stage for a story of intrigue and architectural marvel. To safeguard himself against potential retaliation, Kasyapa moved the capital from Anuradhapura to the formidable Sigiriya rock. There, atop a 200-meter-high granite monolith, he commissioned the construction of a fortress and a luxurious palace, a clear display of his wealth and a testament to his architectural vision. However, after the fall of Kasyapa's dynasty, Sigiriya slipped into the shadows, cloaked by dense forest overgrowth and fading from collective memory. It wasn't until 1831 that the site re-emerged into the spotlight. That year, Major Jonathan Forbes of the 78th Highlanders, part of the British Army, rediscovered Sigiriya during a horseback expedition through the central forests of what was then Ceylon, now known as Sri Lanka. Stumbling upon this magnificent rock fortress and its ruins, Forbes's findings reignited global interest. His detailed writings and sketches brought Sigiriya back from obscurity, captivating colonial officials and scholars alike, and paving the way for future archaeological explorations. Following the rediscovery of Sigiriya by Major Jonathan Forbes, the archaeological spotlight turned toward this enigmatic structure, leading to its eventual excavation. The initial efforts to study Sigiriya were rather haphazard, lacking a systematic approach typical of early antiquarian activities in the region. However, a significant shift occurred in 1895 when H.C.P. Bell, the first commissioner of archaeology for Ceylon and a British archaeologist, took charge. Bell's structured investigations laid the groundwork for understanding Sigiriya's complex layout and rich historical tapestry, illuminating various facets of its construction and artistic achievements. As the 20th century progressed, the Department of Archaeology of Sri Lanka took the helm, bringing a new level of rigor to the exploration of Sigiriya. These systematic archaeological excavations really began to take shape by the mid-century, further accelerated when Sigiriya was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in the 1980s. This period marked intense activities that included detailed mapping of the site, careful excavation of the gardens, and meticulous restoration of the ancient frescoes. Speaking of frescoes, these vibrant paintings on Sigiriya's western face are truly a sight to behold. Depicting celestial maidens known as Apsaras, these artworks showcase the exceptional skill of ancient Sri Lankan artists. Created with natural mineral pigments, these frescoes have withstood the ravages of time, their colors still vivid after more than a thousand years. Their creation technique, reminiscent of the fresco secco method seen in India's Ajanta caves, highlights a shared artistic tradition across the region, though Sigiriya's frescoes have a unique stylistic flair that seems to capture the maidens in ethereal motion, as if floating in the air. The site's water gardens are yet another marvel. Unearthed through diligent excavation, these gardens reveal an intricate hydraulic system featuring pools, pavilions, and dynamically engineered fountains. This level of sophistication in water management suggests comparisons with the legendary Hanging Gardens of Babylon, illustrating that such engineering marvels were not confined to the Western world. Sigiriya's gardens were not only aesthetically pleasing, but also a demonstration of advanced hydraulic technology and urban planning by ancient engineers. 
Then there's the mirror wall, originally so well polished that it reflected King Cassiapa's image as he passed. Over centuries, this wall became a canvas for the thoughts and musings of visitors, covered in inscriptions that date back to the 6th century. These writings, ranging from poetry to personal reflections, provide a unique glimpse into the minds of ancient travelers, similar to modern-day guestbooks. This tradition of leaving one's mark is a human impulse seen across cultures and epochs, evident in places as far-reaching as the Pyramids of Giza, where ancient graffiti also tells stories of those who came before us. Exploring further into the architectural wonders of Siguria, let's delve into why this location was chosen for such a grand fortress. The natural setting of Siguria itself offers some clues. Rising about 200 meters above the plains, the sheer height of this massive rock column provided unparalleled defensive benefits. This elevation was not just daunting for potential invaders to scale, but it also offered inhabitants a broad vantage point, allowing them to see for miles and spot any approaching threats long before they reached the fortress. The rock's steep and rugged sides further shielded the fortress, making direct assaults nearly impossible without advanced siege techniques. Just above the water gardens, the boulder gardens of Sigiria paint a vivid picture of how natural landscapes were skillfully incorporated into the fortress's design. This area is dotted with large, naturally occurring boulders that have been cleverly integrated into the overall layout. Winding pathways snake around these colossal stones, leading to hidden nooks and strategic lookout points. These boulders weren't just pleasing to the eye, they played a crucial role in the fortress's defense, acting as natural barriers and fortified posts. This strategic use of natural rock formations is somewhat akin to the serene rock gardens of Ryuanji in Kyoto, Japan. Although both gardens feature natural stones, Siguria's boulder gardens were primarily designed for defense and control, while Ryuanji's layout aims for contemplation and aesthetic appreciation. Climbing higher, the terraced gardens mark the final stages of the ascent to Sigiria's summit. Here, a series of staircases and pathways are carved directly into the rock face, not only facilitating access to the top but also allowing for the cultivation of gardens and the construction of small structures along the way. These terraces seamlessly integrate the sheer cliffs into the fortress's architecture, showcasing the ingenuity of ancient Sri Lankan architects who transformed a challenging environment into a livable and defensible space. This method of using terraces can be compared to the ancient Incan city of Machu Picchu, which also features gardens cut into mountainous terrain. Both Siguria and Machu Picchu utilize the verticality of their landscapes to enhance agriculture, habitation and defense, demonstrating a deep understanding of how to adapt architecture to the natural environment effectively. As we've ascended through the layered terraces and lush gardens of Sigiria, it's impossible not to marvel at its defensive capabilities which are as impressive as its architecture. The entire fortress was safeguarded by a massive moat and towering walls. The approach to the rock itself was ingeniously designed to be narrow, funneling potential attackers into a tight space where they could be more easily repelled. Throughout the fortress, large boulders were strategically placed, ready to be rolled down on invaders and certain staircases were cleverly designed to be easily removable or destroyed, preventing enemy progression. At the pinnacle of Siguria, extensive residential quarters once stood, serving as the royal abode for King Cassiapa and his retinue. These buildings were robustly constructed from bricks and stones, with some walls still resiliently standing. The stone blocks used in construction, though their exact weight is unknown, are estimated to weigh several tons each, hinting at the remarkable effort that went into their assembly. To create a flat area on the summit, large amounts of rock and soil were excavated, likely requiring immense manpower and possibly even elephant power, underscoring the vast resources at King Cassiapa's command. Drawing an interesting parallel, the construction feats of Sigiria can be likened to those of the Incas Machu Picchu in Peru. Both iconic structures were built in demanding locations, yet they demonstrate an extraordinary ability to blend architectural elements with the natural landscape. Machu Picchu, nestled between mountain peaks and featuring agricultural terraces and planned residential areas, echoes Sigiria's integration of form and function within its environment. The scale of material moved and the meticulousness of Sigiria's construction spotlight its stature as a marvel of ancient urban planning and engineering. More than just a military stronghold, Sigiria symbolized royal authority and divine kingship, 
with its strategic defenses, luxurious residential quarters, and enchanting pleasure gardens all set against the backdrop of ingenious human innovation. This combination not only fortified the fortress physically, but also enshrined it as an indelible symbol of cultural and historical significance in ancient Sri Lanka.